What's up, gay straights and other days? It's Mally. I'm back with another episode of Butterfly Soup. Last we left off, we finally reunited with Min. And now Noelle's here, which means our two worlds are going to collide, and I am so excited. So let's get right on into this. Dia, there you are. Everyone is looking for you. You! <laughs> oh, you two have already met. It. It. <laughs> How you. Why are you here? That's my line! Metal Mid Music is back! <laughs> I can't believe Dia still lets a weakling like you hang out with her. Oh, that's right, you do know about her. That's right, that's right, you knew about her way back then too. Okay. Oh my god. You, you Empire State Building! Hey! <laughs> no short slander, no tall slander. Stop it. Min does a trick with her butterfly knife. Why do you have a knife? Put that away. I'll put it away in your heart! Min, no! <laughs> ah! Ugh. Ugh. Shut up! It sounded cooler in my head! No one even said anything. Anyway, aren't knives like that illegal in California? Are they? I know brass knuckles are. Don't ask how I know that. If I wanted to, I could report you to the police. Ugh. Min reluctantly puts the knife away. Fuck you! There's my girl. Min threateningly draws in closer to Noelle and whispers into her ear, voice low. The dramatic effect is slightly ruined by the fact that Min has to step on top of a storage bin to be taller. I hate you. I hate you more than the stringy things on bananas. Why? I didn't even do anything. Shut up! I won't lose to you! Wait, do you think Noelle is a candidate for my affections? At this point, everyone's so cute, I don't know who I want, so it's anyone's game at this point. What are you talking about? Someday, Dia's gonna realize she's out of your league. What? You're not even taller than her anymore, so all your advantages are gone. I don't... What? When she doesn't like you anymore, I'll gut you and feed you to her dog. I have a dog? I have a dog! Wait, do I? She doesn't even have a dog. I was about to say, I don't remember having a dog. I'll buy her a dog and train it to eat you. Ooh, can we get a Rottweiler? Wait, no, don't eat Noel. <laughs> Someone else ran into the locker room. It only takes a second for Dia and Noel to recognize the sound of a cartridge flip flops. Hey, Chris and Liz are looking for you. Ugh. 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 I don't know what to do for ellipses, man. Uh, have I missed something here? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? I asked first, jackass. They're gonna get on so well. Wow, almost cut myself on this edge. <laughs> Before Akarsha can react, Min grabs the front of her jacket and slams her back to the wall. You want a piece of me? Uh, whoa. Not gonna lie, if you were taller, this would be pretty hot. Akarsha totally knows she's gay. Ah, cute! So at least one of them is kind of out, I think? I don't know. But that's adorable! Uh, Min punches Akarsha in the face! Oh no. Stop it! Dia picks Min up and throws her several feet across the room. Okay, we're just... Alright, Skyrim physics, sure. Min. You stay back! I'll handle this! No, but I'm friends with these people. Please don't break them. Is anyone going to explain to me what's going on here? Who's this emo shorty? Who are you calling short? But you are short. <laughs> I hate how Min is exactly like me when I was in middle school. Maybe a little bit in high school, too. <laughs> Min charges out Akarsha. Yeah! Akarsha kicks her foot out so that the flip-flop flies off. Not La Chancla! <laughs> It hits Min's face with a loud slap. Uh, Min tackles Akarsha to the ground. You think you're so smart, huh? Well, guess what? I hate smart people! Aww, Min! Her hands close around Akarsha's neck. In a panic, Akarsha scrabbles at Min's wrist, but it's no use. Use your head, you stupid clown. If you'll die, I'll kill you. Akarsha sticks a hand down her own leggings. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? This better not be your kicker so that- Akarsha smears her period blood kick hand across bits. Ew! Akarsha, ew! Why? 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 
Oh, it's so gross. Probably effective. Ah. Uh, do I need to put a blood water warning for you? Ah, uh, baby. Uh, being let go. You. Ah. Uh, Ew, yuck. In the confusion, Akarsha staggers to her feet, gasping for breath. Go wash your hands. What the fuck? Noelle rushes to support her. When Akarsha slings her arm over Noelle's shoulders, she accidentally brushes Noelle with her bloody hand. Ew. You contaminated me too. Noelle shoves Akarsha away, leaving her to fend for herself. Akarsha menacingly holds out her dirty hand in Min's direction like a weapon. Min backs away, desperately avoiding being touched by the period blood hand. That's a biohazard, Akarsha! <laughs> Stay away, can't touch this. You, you nasty asshole! That's me. If I can't win by being a kung fu master, I'll win by being a piece of garbage. Same thing. Min looks weirdly moved by Akarsha's words. You stop that titanic theme right now, what the fuck? You crazy bitch. Who are you? They call me Rail Tracer. No, they don't. <laughs> Literally, no one calls you that. Quiet, you. Min has stopped attacking completely. <laughs> it's the Ricardo version! No! Ah! Oh my god. Min has stopped attacking completely now. In fact, she looks kind of impressed. You're the worst scum ever. Let's be friends. See, I told you they'd get on once they got past whatever that was. Really? So we cool? I guess. Wash your fucking hand. More importantly, that was really gross just now, so I never want to fight you again. Let's start over. I'm Min. Min? As in the delinquent kid? The one who knifed someone? Yeah. Got a problem with that? Are you kidding me? I've been looking for you. I need a dumb rebel friend to enable me to make bad decisions. Oh no, what have we done? They're getting along? Noah, why are you surprised? Come on. What's happening? I don't like this. With her clean hand, Akarsha makes a fist and offers it out to Min. Bros? Bros! They fist bump. Aw, oh, I haven't seen a fist bump in forever. Wow, this is so long ago. Be the ye to my ha. What? The knuckles to my enchilada. What? The human to my centipede. This is worse. I don't like this. We can annoy Noelle, together! I have a terrible feeling about this. Min is quickly taking the opportunity to wipe her face on Akarsha's windbreaker. Not the color block hoodie! Ew, no, stop. It's your own damn blood! Yeah, but that's a really nice hoodie, Min, come on! I don't want it either, man. Noelle tries to wipe her contaminated arm on Akarsha too. Akarsha dodges to avoid it. Ugh. <laughs> Tia, hold her down! Okay. <laughs> no, no, please, Dia, Hobie, listen. With brutal efficiency, Dia grabs Akarsha's wrist, covers the bloody hand with a plastic bag, and ties it shut. Then she pins Akarsha to the ground, thrashing and screaming. Chris and Liz come through the door, the rest of the team following after them. Oh no! Akarsha, Dia, and Noel freeze mid scuffle, still covered in blood. Good, you're all here. What the? Noel points accusingly at Min. It's all her fault. Dia did nothing wrong. What? It's your fault for being annoying. You started it. You called me names first. Okay, we don't care who started it. Liz stumbles over Akarsha's fallen flip-flop on the ground. Whose shoe is this? Oh, mine. Why isn't it on your foot? I kicked it off. Why? She hit me. Akarsha points at Min. How old are you guys? Five? Exasperated, Krissa turns to Min. And you're Min? You here to play baseball too? Yeah, I got here late. Well, Min, I'm Krissa. She has a knife! You damn snitch! Hand the knife over. Why should I? Because if you don't, I won't let you play baseball. You... you can do that? I can do that. Min looks very shocked. You can have it back when we're done. But you don't need it here. Min pulls the knife from her pocket and gives it to Krissa. All of them. Wait, she has more than one? Come on, we don't have all day. Reluctantly, Min shakes her jacket out. Several more knives clatter to the ground. Are they all butterfly knives? Min, you're so cool! 
Krissa puts them all on top of a cabinet in the corner of the room. Oh, no fair. It's too tall for Min to reach. She sadly looks up at them. Min! <laughs> Let's go to the field and actually play some baseball now. Yes, please! Gaby baseball! Gaby baseball! We're going to lock this place up so you can leave your backpacks here. Well, I need mine. I'm going to do my homework. Sorry, if you're here, you're playing. That's not gonna go well, Liz. You're very cute and probably very persuasive, but that's not gonna go well. I refuse. So you wanna do this the hard way? Good, because I love the hard way. Then I have no obligation to stay here and argue with you. Dia's fine now, I'm going home. Really? And where's your house keys? Liz? What kind of question is that? They're right here in my- Noelle whirls to the spot where she put down her book bag earlier. It's gone. Krissa adds Noelle's book bag to the top of the cabinet. No! Come on, suffering builds character. I don't want character. I guess we're all playing baseball now? Yes, Gaby's play baseball, I'm so excited! Noelle can be an outfielder, it's fine. Wait, no, these girls might actually be good. Oh, what? Whoa, are we switching points of view? Oh, that's such a cool way to do that! Noelle, yes! Third grade, wait, what? Okay, time travel, sure. Okay, problem... Math equation. What is this? Wait, there's a heartbeat going in my ears. That's weird. Huh. Oh, look at Tiny Noah, she's so cute! Look at the little stars in her hair! Aw. I can't read the test paper. Oh good, I'm not the only one. Problem... Don't make me solve that. Don't make me solve that. I had to take a math class in college. Don't. Uh. E. I hope this doesn't affect your future. Infinity. Problem two. No! I don't know anything. I don't understand any of this. I'm going to fail. All my hard work up until now was for nothing. Wake up. What? Wake up. Wait. Oh! Oh, we're dreaming. I was about to say, how the, who the fuck could do that kind of math? Probably smart people. <laughs> oh, look, he's a little me again. Look at cute little hoodie. I'm so cute. Aw. Dia looks very concerned. I had a nightmare. Ugh, that was silly. It wasn't even real. Sorry. Feel better. She presents Noah with a poorly wrapped, lumpy gift almost as big as she is. Happy birthday. Despite Dia's best efforts, several spots of the gift aren't properly covered with wrapping paper, and Noelle can see clearly what's inside. I appreciate your kindness. You two are cute. May I open it here? Dia nods eagerly. Yes. Noelle unwraps the present and pretends to be shocked by its contents. It's a giant, bright green snake plush. That's so cute! His name is Snakey. Uh, careful, Dia. Razor just came out with a plushie that's called Snakey Snick. <laughs> Aw, adorable! Look at how he's striped. Noel looks. Indeed, he's striped. He's the youngest. He has two older brothers and a sister. Wait, do you have all the rest of them? You bought this for me? I won him from the hammer game at the fair. Hit the hammer really hard. I chose him because he reminds me of you. He reminds her of me. How? I don't even like snakes, and stuffed animals are a useless waste of space. Yet against all logic, a lump forms in Noelle's throat impossible to swallow. Noelle quickly stamps down all the stupid emotions and focuses on organizing her thoughts. Thank you. He is green, soft, and at least five feet long. That's exactly my height. That's so cute. I will place him in my bedroom and preserve him in mint condition for as long as possible. What? Uh, she looks happy. A warm and fuzzy feeling swells in Noelle's chest. You're my favorite person. Aww, Min's gonna hate that, but aww. I think I may have developed some kind of attachment to you, too. Noelle's just as awkward as me about feelings. Aww. We should go on vacation together someday, when we grow up. Would be fun. That would be fun. I would accompany you with only mild complaining. Where? Maybe England. England could be cool. Can't go to die. <laughs> oh, oh, we got a potter head here. What house are you? I am Gryffindor. What are you? I gotta know. Uh, 
Noelle watches Dia's face drop as she silently goes through the five stages of grief, remembering most of the locations in Harry Potter aren't real. Yeah, but like, there's Harry Potter World. I don't know if they have one in England, actually, but if you go to Universal Studios, you can go, I think. I don't know, it's been a while. We can still at least see Platform 9 and 3 quarters. They put a plaque of it at King's Cross. Okay. What else do you want to see in England? Uh, all you can eat buffet. They have those here too. It's so simple to make you happy. If everyone thought like you, there would be no wars. Dia doesn't appear to know how to respond to this, so she just looks away and smiles shyly. <sighs> if we run out of things to do in England, we can always watch TV in our hotel room. No, you complain too much when things aren't scientifically correct. Like when radioactive things cause superpowers. You get so hung up on it, it's distracting. Distracting how? Distracting like... Noelle watching movie in class last week. <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut up! This is not scientific. He can't do that. That's not how nuclear physics works. No! Shut up! Oh. <laughs> we can watch an educational nature documentary then. Like Planet Earth. I don't like the part where the baby elephant follows its mom's tracks the wrong way. We can skip the part where the baby elephant follows its mom's tracks the wrong way. Suddenly, Dia starts climbing off the playground structure. Just remembered. Actually, Dia had been preparing to save this for the past 15 minutes. Want you to meet someone. I made a new friend yesterday. Really? Who? Min. Oh, is that their meeting? Oh, this is gonna be cute! And also probably irritating for her, but... Ah! Min? Is that a boy or a girl? Uh, not sure. Oh. How can you not be sure? Didn't you meet? It was hard to tell. You'll see what I mean. I will? When you become friends. Min is really nice. Okay. Gave me a seaweed sheet. I've never seen you this excited over someone before. They must be really something. Dia looks like she agrees. This must be him. Her. It. Instead of introducing them, Dia's just happily standing there in silence. The other girl circles around Noelle, sizing her up. Metal music intensifies. Her face darkens when she sees the snake plushie Dia gave her. Ugh. So you're Dia's best friend. You, you giraffe. What? I'll fight you. Excuse me? There can only be one of us. So we have to duel. I'll beat you in hand-to-hand -hand combat. What? No. Starting in three, two, one. I already said no. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, we're home, I guess. What was that all about? What an idiot. What does Dia see in someone that dumb? I don't understand. I'm home. What did you get on the math test? An A minus. A minus? Why not A? Noelle's mom is cutting a column out of the Chinese newspaper. Look at this article. This boy was accepted into every single Ivy League college. He lives in Pleasanton. If he can do it, why can't you? I'm putting this on your wall to inspire you. She gets up and tapes it in Noelle's bedroom next to the poem her dad printed out. There is no success without hardship. Can I go to the park with Dia this Saturday? What for? We're taking a walk around the lake. There's also a pet cone nearby. She wants to look at the fish and hamsters. Will Dia still be your friend if you say no? Yes, but I want to- Then there's no point. Now that you've already established your friendship, you should be expending the minimum amount of energy to maintain it. Please. Otherwise, you're just wasting your limited time. Fun is an illusion. Don't be controlled by your emotions. Um, no parent really talks like that, but I understand why you wrote it that way. So, I'll be okay with that. But I'm free that Saturday. Chinese school is on break. You can use it to study for your tests at school. I already studied for that. All of them? I finished reading all my textbooks already, twice. Did you do all the practice problems? I did all the practice problems. Ha, take that. There's nothing that could possibly be left for me to do. I'll buy next year's textbooks so you can get started on those then. Oh, you fucker, what the hell? Oh, there's a the little snake, cute. Ugh. Upset, Noelle curls up in bed, angrily hugging her giant snake plushie. Read next year's textbook. Uh, well, 
the fox and the grapes. What? A hungry fox saw a fine bunch of grapes hanging from a vine. He did his best to reach them by jumping as high as he could into the air, but it was all in vain for they were just out of reach. So he gave up trying and walked away with an air of dignity and unconcern, remarking, I thought those grapes were ripe, but I see now they are quite sour. Reading comprehension questions. Why doesn't the fox eat the grapes? Oh, well, don't make me do school stuff. I graduated a few months ago. Uh, sour? Through the window, Noel can hear someone whiffing a badminton racket outside. Sorry, John! It's okay. It sounds like they're playing badminton in the driveway without a net. They're probably in the dumb kids class. Two, what does it was all in vain mean? It was useless? No! Oh my god, did you see that? They're both laughing. Aw. And I get why Noelle says, like, they might be in the dumb kids class, because when you're used to, like, a certain standard your entire life, like, I'm guessing she was in gifted classes all her life, like, same here. Then, especially with her parents basically looking down on anyone who isn't in the gifted class, I can see why she'd say they were probably in the dumb kids class. Oh, Noelle. Stupid hooligans wasting their time. Having fun? Ha! Huh. I'm above such petty unnecessities. That's not you talking, Noelle. That's your parents' influence, and... I hope, I hope you get away from that at some point. They'll regret it when they're working at McDonald's someday. Yeah, see, that's not her voice. That's her parents talking, and that makes me so sad. I hate sports anyway. I'm the real winner here. Three, what's the message of the story? Appearances are the deceptive. Look before you leave. Uh... Appearances are deceptive? I don't know. Ninth grade. Oh, we're back. Jeez. Well, that that definitely gives some context as to why Noelle is the way she is. I hope we get flashbacks for all of them, because I love learning about them this way. That's, that's such a good way to do it. So that explains why she hates sports so much. Maybe she just... Maybe that was always painted as a distraction to her, and like, she has to succeed, or her parents will call her a failure. Oh, Noelle. Well, I'm glad she's playing baseball now, then. Noelle, you're up to bat. Noelle grudgingly steps up to the plate. I hate sports. Why am I here? Akarsha is pitching. She raises her eyebrows at Noelle as she winds up. Wake up. What? Wake up, Frenchman. You're in a coma. I am not. You are trying to confuse me and failing. Akarsha pitches the ball. Swing. Through sheer luck, Noelle manages to hit the ball. Aw, sweetie. The first time might be luck, but if you do it again, it means that you're enjoying this. <laughs> It pops straight up. Noelle runs for first base with the agility of an old man with two broken legs. Aw. We'll work you out. We'll warm you up. You'll get some you'll get some exercises in and you'll be good in no time. Aw. Pop fly. I got it. Krissa catches it in her mitt. The runner already on first base gives Noelle a strange look when she runs up to it. Noelle, you're out. Stop running. It's embarrassing. What? Why? She caught it, genius. But so? Why can't I run? How come the runner on first is now? <sighs> because it's a pop fly. Like, I played softball ages ago, so I don't know how accurate I'm being. It's a pop fly, and those are usually pretty easy to catch. So the runner on first probably was like, don't bother moving, because, like, you're going to get out anyway if you do that, so. The rules of this game are really incomprehensible. No, you're just not used to them. It's okay. Nice try. Yeah, at least you hit it. I don't need praise for failing. I'm not stupid. Noel, Noel. Someone needs to give this girl a hug. A lot of hugs. Noel grabs a mitt and joins Dia and the others on the field. Ooh, where are you playing? We're taking turns batting. Everyone who isn't a batter or runner is defending on the field. Okay, so are you left field, right field, or center? It feels so odd to be doing this. I keep half expecting someone to holler at me to get off. Aww, you definitely need this. Suddenly, Dia swerves back to avoid a bee flying out her face. Did that bee just try to sting you? Come back here, you bitch bee cow, or I'm gonna fuck you up! <laughs> I love her. Min moves indignantly between Dia and the bee. <sighs> She's trying to protect Dia from the bee. Min throws a punch at the offending bee. After silently watching a few fruitless swings, Dia takes off her hat and strikes the bee in midair with the bill of her cap. It falls to the ground, dead. Min beams at her with pure adoration in her eyes. When did you move back? About two weeks ago. Wow, if we had any classes together, we'd have crossed paths way sooner. 
Does Jun Sa go here now too? No, he's at a different school. He goes to Niles. That's an easier, less Asian school. Why would your parents put you in different schools? They didn't. I originally went there too, but I got expelled. Is it because of your knife? Expelled? How was Florida? You're not going to ask about the expelled part? Horrible. They don't have boba places there. I had to drink milkshakes. There's no boba places in Florida? Oh, that's criminal. What the? That's crazy. And everyone was white. Aw, <laughs> oh, man. Are white people that bad? They do shit like pull their eyes into slits and go... I don't... I'm not comfortable saying that because... No, I've been on the receiving end of that. Don't. Or go back to China. I'm not even Chinese. Yeah, you're Korean, right? Ugh. Yep. Yep, that's the bad part of it. Aw. I had to get so good at beating people up. Aw. What the heck? That sounds like a cartoon. But unfortunately, it is part of real life. Even today, that still fucking happens, and it's really shitty. I thought racism was over. No, dear. Not even close. Me too! But they showed us that cartoon every year in class, where they time travel to when there's segregation. What happened? Beats me! The next batter strikes out. Liz, who's acting as the catcher, returns the ball to Akarsha. Akarsha fumbles it and drops it on the mound. Everyone watches disapprovingly as she scrambles to pick it back up. That was an illusion. A trick of the light. No, we clearly saw you mess up. <sighs> it's Dia's turn at bat now. Oh, oh, get ready for a fucking home run. Dia hits the pitch with a downright scary amount of force. The ball shoots over everyone's heads and lands in the tree in the distance, causing several startled crows to flap out. Yeah! <laughs> Whose side are you on? We're supposed to be on defense. Okay, but you have to admit that was sick. Nice one, Dia. Yay! Aw, it's Min's turn at the plate now. Did you get the ball or do you have a spare? You probably have a spare. She immediately grabs the heaviest bat they have. Min, no, you're gonna clock yourself. Min Sa, are you sure you want to use that? We have other bats that are closer to your- This one is fine! She hasn't even tried the other ones. Who knows, maybe she can swing it. But in general, people your size should use the 31 inch- No! I'm not some weakling! On the mound, Akarsha paces back and forth as Min squares up in the batter's box. Are you trying to psych me out? I bet you can't eat five crayons. Oh yeah? I bet I can. No eating crayons while the club is in session, please. Actually, Noel, how about you try pitching now? It's been a while since we switched. Hmm, I worry about this. Me? Noel switches places with Akarsha on the mound. Bring it, you weak bitch! Oh... Oh no. What are you insulting me for? We're on the same side now. No, we're not. What the heck are you talking about? Don't baseball pitchers pitch to their own team? No. Yeah, no. No, you're you're part of the defense still. Everyone is shooting Noelle Paul Brooks. It's okay, she doesn't know what you're talking about. No, you pitch against the enemy. It's the pitcher's goal not to let the batter get on base. Oh, I see. So that's why they pitch at such high velocity, so it's harder for the batter to hit a touchdown. It's cute she's trying. Noel, have you never watched a baseball game before? Can you even name a single baseball team? Sharks, 49ers... Aren't the 49ers footballs? Hayes? I don't... I played softball for a bit, I didn't... The only team I know is the Chicago Cubs! The A's. Crystal looks immensely relieved. Yes, guessing. Uh, because I think the other two are football. Bravo! If you'd failed that, I probably would have started crying. Min squares up in the batter's box. Throw the ball. Noel throws the ball with all her might. It plops back down in the grass, not even halfway to Min. Aww. What the hell was that? That throw was so soft. Nobody ordered ice cream, Noel. Get it together. All right, I get it. I guess we'll count that as a ball. What? You didn't throw it at the strike zone. If you miss, it's a ball. If you throw four balls before the batter strikes out, the batter goes to first base for free. Where is the strike zone exactly? Isn't it the little box over there? Like there's home plate and then the batter stands on one side. It's been a while. It's I, I played baseball when I was like a literal child, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, right about there. That's that's what I thought. Oh, look at the min. <laughs> 
starts at the midpoint between the top of the batter's shoulders and the top of their pants. The bottom is aligned at the hollow beneath the kneecap. What happens if you're wearing a skirt? Does it default to the nearest pair of pants you own? No, it defaults to your knees. You have to be wearing proper uniform pants to play official games. There's rules about that. If we want to throw the game but in a subtle way, all we have to do is pull our pants up really high. What? Like, up to our armpits. That's not subtle at all! Assuming we play this the regular way, don't short people just naturally have smaller batting zones? I guess. Since their bodies are smaller. Yeah, it takes more precision to strike them out. By the way, the measurements are based on the batter's stance, not while they're standing straight up. Well, yeah, because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Knowing that, can't we just reduce the batting zone's volume to zero by squatting down? That way, any pitch they throw becomes a ball. I don't know if there's a rule against that, but if you do anything too weird, it'll be considered poor sportsmanship. If it feels like the other people aren't playing fair, it won't be fun anymore. The umpire will probably stop you, too. Whenever something's not explicitly outlined in the rules, it's his call. Okay, are we done explaining now? Can we play baseball? Yes, and now that we've caught up Noel, we can play. Sure, I think we covered all the- Ah! I hate the gratuitous drums. Get it? Yeah, I fucking get it, Krissa. Ah! Laugh politely. No, fuck you. Noelle doesn't laugh. It's in character anyway. That was horrible. Krissa looks disappointed by Noelle's cold reception to her joke. Oh, come on, you make puns. You, you should expect at least one person to do that. Come on. My joke was a swing and a miss. No. I better pitch the ball before she says more. Throw the ball. Noelle hurls the ball with all her might. It pops down the grass in the exact same spot as last time. Oh, can we move Noelle up a little bit, please? Come on. Dia raises her hand and looks at Krista expectantly like she's waiting to be called on. Aw, oh, sweet baby. Yes, you can just talk. You don't have to do that. Noelle doesn't have enough upper body strength to throw it that far. That's a problem. No matter what position she plays, she's going to have to throw it that far at some point. Well, maybe we can get some practice with her in. Well, good thing I'm not joining this stupid club then. Okay, Noelle, easy. Problem solved. All right, whatever. I'll pitch for now. Noel hands the ball over to Krista and joins Akarsha and Dia back on the field. As Noel jogs up to them, Akarsha plucks a dandelion from the grass and presents it to her. If you were a flower, you'd be a damned lion. I ship them. This is literally a weed. Akarsha tries to blow the dandelion seeds into Noel's eyes. Stop that! Min smacks Krista's pitch into the ground and takes off running. Dia tears after it with a look of a dog chasing a squirrel. She scoops it up and throws it to Akarsha, who's manning first base now. I got it, I got it! Akarsha tries to catch it, but ends up knocking the ball away with the tip of her glove. Ha! Oh, that's a strategy too, actually. Hit it so close they have to run to get it. Ah, cool! Akarsha, you need to work on your catches. Huh? Why? You dropped the ball. What? That wasn't me. <laughs> that was totally you. Everyone saw. Incredible. That must be my lookalike from another dimension. <laughs> you briefly glimpsed a parallel universe where Akarsha didn't catch the ball. Hey, at least she can pitch, though. But now you've crossed back over to the reality where I did catch it. That explains the memory discrepancy. It's the only logical explanation. Or you just messed up and won't admit it. Min manages to round the bases and score thanks to Akarsha's mistake. Akarsha, you're up to bat. Oh, I can't wait to see this. I'm ready. I'm ready too, let me see. Akarsha twirls the bat behind her back, squats down for no reason, and hops several times like a frog before springing back up in a dramatic pose. Is she going to do that every single time she goes up to bat? Knowing her? Yes. My signature. You don't need a signature. Oh! Watch out. Huh? Akarsha batted a ball straight at Noelle. No, Akarsha, she can't catch that! Noelle flails her arm in a panicked attempt to catch the ball. She misses it. Krissa does nothing. She's still sulking because Noelle didn't laugh at her joke. Oh, come on. Ow! Oops. That was... Ghost. It wasn't a ghost! It's Min's turn to pitch now. Krissa hands the ball to her and heads over to the plate to bat. Whenever you're ready. The fielders are all backing up. Chris is even taller than Dia, so she looks like she can hit it pretty far. Ah, oh, 
Oh, sweet. Look at Ben. Look at her girl. Oh, she looks so cute. Ben clutches the ball in a claw like grip. She brings her arm back and then forward, hard, over the top, and lets go. As the ball approaches the plate, it does a little hop like a hiccup. Carissa looks weirded out. She doesn't swing. The flutter is just enough to throw Liz off. The ball glances off the side of her glove and bounces off her kneecap. Wait, there was a special throw. Were you learning how to pitch that special throw? That's so cool! What the? It's kind of creepy, isn't it? Seeing the ball coming at you without spinning. Yeah, it was like just floating at me. Er, I couldn't tell the difference. It looked normal to me. Liz returns the ball to Min. Min clutches it in the same messed up looking grip, rears up and lets another pitch go. Carissa misses it by a foot. It's a pitch you couldn't hit with a tennis racket. Liz has to twist into a weird angle to stop the ball in the dirt. A knuckleball, huh? That's right, that's what it's called, a knuckleball. Ming learned it. Ah! Now I just gotta learn how to catch it. Ah! As Dia, I know we're in Noelle's point of view right now. What's that? It's a rare pitch thrown with nearly no spin, so its path is unpredictable. Oh, I get it. You're making this up as an excuse for why you missed. N no, it's an actual thing. I'm not making it up. It operates on the same principle as a float serve in volleyball. Or a knuckleball in soccer, if you know that. I don't. Whoops. Uh, no, I don't know either of those. Okay, so when you pitch a ball normally, it spins like crazy, somewhere around 10 times on the way to the plate. Spin is what gives a ball stability as it moves. If you can learn to throw a ball with minimal spin, its instability will give an unpredictable trajectory. It starts behaving like a chaotic system, like the weather. And that's great, because a lot of sports mastery is just recognizing situations. Everyone says to keep your eye on the ball, but it's actually impossible to do that due to the limitations of human reaction. What good hitters actually do is anticipate the ball's flight path based on cues they recognize from being in similar situations before in the past. In other words, they don't see the ball, they just guess its trajectory. You're making me want to pick up baseball again. Ah, but they can't do that against a knuckleball. That's right, a knuckler's trajectory is drastically different each time it's pitched. So no matter how good you are, there's no way to reliably hit it. If thrown correctly, it moves so erratically that it's impossible to hit except through sheer luck. I still can't tell if you're making this all up as an excuse for why you suck. Okay, Sakura, shut up. No, it's real. But you couldn't catch it, so it's also a convenient excuse for you. And if it is real, then why doesn't everyone just use it? It sounds practically game-breaking, because it's really hard to master and Min did it! Min did it! Oh, I'm so proud of you! Aw, oh, my baby gay. Well, for one... Knuckleball is one of the hardest pitches to throw in baseball, if not the hardest. Put a little too much spin on the ball or throw it just a little too fast, and you're basically serving up a meaty practice pitch that will get hit out of the park. And even at its best, a knuckler is double-edged short. Batters can't hit it, but that also means pitchers can't control it, and catchers can't catch it. When thrown right, even Min has no idea where it's going. That's why the catcher has to train to catch it! They say throwing a knuckleball for a strike is like throwing a butterfly into a mailbox across the street. Title tiebacks! That's so cool! Even in the big leagues, catchers hate it. And if I let it get it past me, it could lead to the batter or runner on base advancing. With a knuckleball or pitching, the catcher has to focus so hard on stopping it that runners on base will have an easier time stealing. It's a big pain. So basically, it's hard to throw right, it's hard to control even when you do throw it right, and it's punishing if you miss. Pretty much, no one trusts it. Knuckleball is the pitch of someone with nothing less to lose. And that's us. We can try things that no coach in their right mind would ever risk, because no one expects anything from us. So we might as well take advantage of that, right? Even if we don't win a single game, at least we'll have fun. Fun? What kind of nonsense is this? Chris strikes out! Good job, man! I'm so proud of her for learning it! The ball ricochets off Liz's mitt and catches her bare hand, striking her thumb at a painful looking angle. Oh no! Ow! Okay, time out. That looked pretty painful. Oh, Liz! Liz's thumb has turned to swallow and purple. Are you okay? I'll live. Min, is this all you know how to throw? I can throw fastballs too, but they're not that fast. So knuckleball is kind of my specialty. I used to watch videotapes of Tim Wakefield pitching on TV over and over again, and copied that. It's the only pitch I really practiced. That's so smart. Honing all your skill on an off-speed pitch, knowing that you don't have the muscle to throw fast. Did your coach suggest it? Uh, no, I didn't have one. No one taught me anything. I taught myself. Huh, then what made you decide to specialize as a knuckler? Dia. Dia, so that they could be a pair. I chose it because, uh, it's hard to catch. 
so Dia has to be the one to catch it, since it'll hurt everyone else. What kind of reason is that? A cute, gay as hell reason. Ah, She's so stupid she unknowingly ended up doing something smart. No, Akarsha, that's you. Man, what do you mean by Dia having to catch it? Dia's immune to it because she's special. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. Dia has been standing by hopefully for five minutes now, looking like she wants to say something. Dia, would you like to try catching in my place? Ah. Dia nods furiously. Then that settles it. Let's switch. Once Dia is strapped on all the gear, Min throws it again. Dia caught it. Yeah, perfect pair. Aw, cute. What? She sounds like Fox falling off the stage in Super Smash Bros. Melee. I knew it. Krissa was making it up. Shut up, Sakura. I'm never believing your lies again. We weren't lying. Dia just caught it again. See? Dia's amazing. Okay, that has to be a fluke. Calm down. You're the one who needs to calm down. They managed to relieve another hitter together. Akarsha is up next. On her way to the plate, she tries to do the splits, fails, and sheepishly crawls back to her feet. That was my plan all along. I'm playing four-dimensional chess. God, I can't stand her. You love her. I want to push her off a cliff. But a shallow one, so she doesn't get hurt. Just to scare her. Aw. Then winds up and throws another knuckler. It veers wildly up to the sky. Without hesitation, Dia rises out of her crouch and gloves it. What? That would have been a ball, but still. Is it really that surprising? Dia's always been good at sports. I'd be more shocked if she failed. No, but you don't understand. This goes beyond being good at sports. It's literally impossible. Akarsha swings and misses it for the third time. She struck out. Uh, that was performance art. You can't make these excuses every time you mess up. <sighs> Once Dia and Min have relieved the entire roster, Liz claps her hands together to get their attention. All right, everyone, let's end the meeting for today. What, already? Yeah, it's been like two hours. Huh? They say time flies when you're having fun. But I wasn't having fun. Yes, you were. I must have been so miserable that my mind wiped parts of my memory out. Let's head back inside. Dia, I'll race you. <laughs> Dia and Min tear off at top speed. After a beat, the others begin heading uphill as well at a deliberately more reasonable pace. I haven't seen Dia this happy since the time the vending machine malfunctioned and gave her two Kit Kat bars instead of one. Noelle subtly tries to regulate her breathing rate so no one knows she's getting winded walking uphill. Hey, Noelle. Uh, thanks for putting up with us today. Sorry we sort of forced you to play. It wasn't the worst. I may find it in me to forgive you someday. Yeah, you did good. I did terrible. For an unathletic person, you did good. Okay, come on. Give yourself more credit. That's to you out there too if you're beating yourself up over anything at all. It's okay, just try again. Okay, you did terrible. But you tried your best and that's what matters. It's not like everyone can be deep. Don't worry so much and just have fun. It's not a competition. Right. Krissa pats Noelle on the head. Don't touch me. <laughs> Same. I'm also weird about p random people just touching me. We really appreciate... <clears throat> Pun! Yuck. Noelle tries to escape. She takes one step, slips on the muddy grass, and falls on her butt. Oh. Noelle! What are you doing, Noelle? Trying to win America's Funniest Home Video? Ugh! Krissa, you pull her up. My hands are full. No! Noelle scrambles to her feet and follows the others up the bank as quickly as she can, which is not very quick. Hey, wait! Noelle! They're being nice to me to trick me into joining the club. No, they're being nice to you because they want to be your friend, stupid. I won't fall for it. Unlike some people, I have control over my emotions. <sighs> You're going to be so great when you finally let go. I'll just ignore her. Fuck! <laughs> what was that? What do you think? Min is picking herself off the ground. There is a min-shaped dust imprint on the door now. Are you okay? The door was locked! You probably should have checked before ramming straight into it. Don't tell me what to do! Looks like we'll have to wait for Chris and Liz to unlock it. Min pulls a lighter out of her pocket and lights a cigarette. Wait, what? You're a freshman! Stop it! Are you serious? That's illegal. 
What the goddamn hell is your damage? Man, what happened? Man, what fucking happened? I can't do anything without you calling it illegal. Oh, that's actually illegal. Because it is illegal. Even if it wasn't, what kind of idiot are you? Didn't you learn about the health effects of tobacco in school? It's just a bunch of statistics. Plenty of people smoke and don't die. And please, no. What, you think you're better than the laws of probability? Yeah, I am. Min, stop. Go ahead and remove yourself from the gene pool, then. I don't care. I do? Hey! Hey, Min, can I try smoking it? No! You're in ninth grade! Stop! What? Have you lost your mind? Come on, aren't you curious? It's not like I'll get addicted just from one smoke. Min holds out the cigarette for Garsha. Here. Don't mind if I do. No! Noel bats the cigarette out of Akarsha's hands. Okay, now you've made a fire hazard, Noel. It lands in some dry pine needles and bursts into flames. Noel! Ah! Ah! Frenchman, what have you done? Shut up! Smokey the bear is crying right now. Only you can prevent forest fires. Well, shit. What do we do now? Put it out! Oh my god! Pee on it. Are you stupid? A little bit. Stop, drop, and roll. You don't do that unless you're already on fire. Head on. Apply directly to forehead. No! This isn't helping. Silence falls over the group as they hear approaching footsteps on the other side of the wood divider. It sounds like Chris and Liz are slowly getting closer to the rocker room. Hey, what are you guys screaming about? Nothing's wrong, so don't come in here! Is everything okay? Everything is fine. There is the nearest fire extinguisher. The footsteps pause for a brief stunned moment before resuming with dramatically increased speed and urgency. Crap! We need to fix this! We should smother it. Someone use their jacket. What if the jacket gets burnt? What if you get burnt? Fucking you- Ah! This is my favorite jacket, man. Fine, Min. Yours is black. Do it. Same. Yours is black! Okay, who likes your jacket the least? Me. But your jacket's cute. You know, it's fine. Dia strips off her hoodie. Min watches with extreme interest, but looks incredibly disappointed when she sees Dia's wearing a shirt underneath. Min. I mean, you're in ninth grade. Come on. Akarsha throws the jacket over the fire and stomps on it. Okay, I think we extinguished it. Teamwork. Dia picks her jacket up and shakes it out. Other than mud prints from Akarsha's flip-flops, it looks no worse for wear. I can't believe Frenchman snapped and tried to commit arson. That's not what happened. Chris and Liz are here. What's that burnt smell? Uh, uh, uh. Who did it? It was Jerry. We're inventing a person now? Who the hell is Jerry? He's a guy. Black hair. Right, we all saw him. He did it. Dia nods helpfully. Huh. Hmm. Oh my god, what a fucking day. Okay, we're back home with Noel, and I'm gonna call that one here, because that was a pretty long game, but... But now we sort of, like, figured out our group dynamic. We finally crossed worlds with Min again. Everyone is back together. And this is just so wholesome and nice. And we're slowly getting to know each member of the team. And I'm so excited to keep going with this. And I hope you are too. So thank you so much, whoever happens to be watching this. Like, comment, subscribe. It really does help me out. Until next time. Bye.